have an application here with an article model, and whenever you have a page which lists records like I do here, consider creating an RSS or Atom feed for it. It's a great standardized way to fetch dynamic content. Even though feed readers might not be as popular today as they were a few years ago, many users still use them, and it's quite easy to implement in Rails, so why not? Let me show you. First of all, you'll need to decide if you want to provide an RSS or Atom feed. I'll link to this page in the show notes, which gives a nice comparison of the two, and provides some XML examples of each one, along with a nice table of tags so you can uh, see the naming differences. Now, I think Atom has some nicer features, but I'll be providing source code for both options in this episode. However, I recommend you just choose one or the other. Don't provide both because that can add confusion, and pretty much all feed readers today uh, have no problem reading either one. To start us off, I'm going to add an Atom feed to this page which displays a list of articles. Now that page is served by this articles controller index action, and I just need to support an Atom feed response for this action. Now you could add a respond to block inside of this controller, which uh, handles both the HTML and Atom formats like this. But if you, these are both just serving up uh, view templates, this actually isn't necessary. You don't have to add a respond to block because Rails will automatically look up the proper view template that matches that given format. So all we have to do is make a new view template for serving up the index action for the Atom format, and then we can provide the interpreter we want to use. So we could use an ERB file here, or use the XML Builder library, which uh, was written by Jim Wyrick. So this allows us to easily generate XML through Ruby code, and we have this XML Builder object, which any method called on this will generate a tag with that name. And if we pass in a block, we can nest tags like this, and let's set the title to Superhero Articles, and let's try generating this for now. So now I can trigger that action by passing articles.atom in the URL, and Safari automatically detects that this is an atom feed called Superhero Articles, and if I had any items in that feed, it would display them here. Now if I run the curl command and passing in that atom feed URL, you can see it's a really simple XML with just those two tags. So now it's just a matter of filling in the rest of the XML tags as shown in this example to complete our atom feed. Now Rails actually provides a helper method to make generating an atom feed a little easier so you don't have to write all the XML from scratch. You can see the documentation here is pretty well documented. Basically what you do is call atom feed and then you can call various methods on this and add entries as shown here. So back inside of the builder template, I can use that atom feed helper method here, and that way I can loop through all the articles. And then for each one of these, I can call feed.entry and pass in that article record, and that way I have this entry XML object that I can call additional methods on, such as title, which will be the uh, article's name, and content for the article's content. And then I'll also add a entry in here for the author, and that takes a block because an author can have multiple details, such as the name, which is the uh, article's author attribute. So now if I reload this Atom feed in Safari, it includes all the records with the author name, the content, and so on. Now some things Rails provides automatically for us. It automatically set the publication time to the created at column, and uh, automatically created a link here so that it goes to the actual article page. Now there are several options we can pass to the entry method to customize the, what URL it links to, uh, the publish time, and so on. So in this case, an article has a separate published at column. So I can specify that as an option here, published is that article's published at column. So now instead of using the time the record was created, it's going to use the published at column in the database. Once you feel that your feed is ready, it's a good idea to validate it. And W3C provides a validator service, which you can use direct input, which is really useful in development. So I'll run that same curl command to download the XML for the feed and pass it to my pasteboard. And then paste it into here and call check on it. And so this gives both errors and recommendations. So I'll just fix the error here, which is saying that it's missing an updated element. So to make this atom feed valid, I need to add a call to update it in here, and this should be the time that the feed was last changed. And so I'll use articles uh, maximum updated at column on here. So I'll try validating again with this, pasting in the corrected code, and check this, and now we have a valid atom feed. 
So now that we have a valid feed, it's time to link to it from the HTML version. And that's usually done with this standardized feed icon. It's at feedicons.com. You can just easily download it from here and then move it into the app assets directory. So now with those images downloaded, we can easily use them inside of the HTML index template. I uh, will say link to that image tag for the feed icon. Let's use the 28 by 28 version. And that is the article's URL with the format set to Atom. And now if we reload this article's HTML page, there's our feed icon, which I just uh, added some styling to float it to the right. Clicking it goes to the article's Atom feed. Now one more thing we should do to finish this up is add an auto discovery link tag and Rails provides a helper method for doing this. It's just called auto discovery link tag and you need to pass in the format you want it to use, in this case, Adam, and then you can pass in the URL. So we'll say articles URL and set the format to Adam like we did below. Now this is actually expected to go inside of the head tag in our HTML document. So I'm going to use content for here and say head here and then going inside of my application layout file, I can add the yield to the head uh, content for attribute there. Now you can see what that tag does if you watch the location bar when I reload this page, you can see it adds this feed indicator here and when I click on it, it goes to that feed. So it only took a few minutes here to create a fully valid Atom feed and link to it from the HTML page. Now, as promised, I'll also include some code for creating an RSS feed versus an Atom feed. Just make a new file in here called index.rss.builder. Now, I'm just going to paste in the code for this. Even though Rails doesn't offer a helper method for generating an RSS feed, it's pretty easy to do from scratch through XML Builder. And notice I'm just creating a separate um, item tag for each of the articles and setting the various attributes. Now, GUID here is kind of an interesting attribute. It stands for Global Unique Identifier. It's often set to just the URL of the item, but you wanna make sure this doesn't change. So if you do change your URLs, make sure that this one stays the same because RSS feeder, feed readers determine uh, whether the article is read or not based off of the Global Unique Identifier. So with that view in place, I can call articles.rss to get the same feed, but in RSS format. Now, you'll likely want to just provide one or the other, not both Atom and RSS, but I just wanted to show both examples here. Now, a quick note about password protection. If you want your feed to be private, you can easily do this with some HTTP basic authentication. Now, I won't be going into detail on this here, but you can check out the API documentation for further details uh, that Rails provides some methods for doing this and a nice example here in the docs for uh, password protecting an Atom feed like this. Now, just be sure if you're using HTTP basic to do it over a secure connection or else the password is sent in the clear. Well, that's it for this episode on generating an Atom or RSS feed. Rails makes it quite easy to do. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.